I'll whip them all out and then we'll show it being uh, removed. Watching nuts and bolts is just kind of dangerous. We've done the difficult ones. If you can get, get through them with your grinder, you laugh and the rest of it's just time and effort. Right, I'll get ready to show you something good and interesting and we'll be back. Right, okay, done loads of prep and um, all the nuts and bolts are undone, so hopefully in the next sequence without any cuts and uh, cutting and coming back, we're going to have the axle off and the diff out and all the bits and bobs done. So, let's get started. I've got help for this, my mate Mike, because there's a little bit too much weight for me to be doing at this height and I uh, don't want to pop anything. Wait, ready? Ready. All the bolts are out of there. Let's get this one out. That's it, dump that one on the floor, mate. One. Okay, that's that. That was nice and easy. I already took the one out the other side. <coughs> now, if you come in and have a look, all the, all the nuts and bolts are out of the diff, so we'll create a gap. Nice sharp chisel. Wedge it in there, and then. Okay, this is another heavy lump. I'll just get a lever in here. Tight fit, probably. Make sure you don't get any nuts and bolts holding it on. Hmm. Gonna annoy me now, aren't you? Just because I want to do it all in one ear. Oh. Alright. It's stuck. I do not know why that is that stiff in there. It should be coming out relatively easy. Make sure it comes out square when you do yours. Make sure you're not under it as well. Oh, that's an heavy lump. Okay, that's that. Right. Look like a bit more of a sweat than I wanted to. I've undone the um, panelled rod bulb, which is there. And earlier I said I was going to undo the um, big bolt on the back, on the other arm, which I have done. Bolts there, bolts on the bottom shock, bottom of the shock. So now, we're just going to go, yeah, just shoot that, just manage that in. It's the way. Catch the springs though on the way down here. Spring off on the floor. All good. Down she goes. And that's it, that's the axle casing off. That wasn't too bad. Apart from that slight irritation with that bolt. All durable on the floor, done it before on the floor. Good opportunity now if you're doing it to uh, get in here with your paintbrush and make all your chassis nice and shiny and black and scrape it off. Undo your power steering pipe bolts up there, get the paint in behind. Ah, oh, right. Okay, that's that. Back in a sec when we're ready to do the next bit. That was quite good. Didn't hurt at all. Right, it's <laughs> going to fly back together now. Um, poly bushes. If you're just fitting um, fit them into a normal arm, as we said, easy job, lovely. You only got to mess about with the um, caster corrected uh, bushes if you're lifting it up and not changing the arms. Loads of copper grease around your two halves. I've already stuck the other half in and I've already stuck another arm up. So we can do this one in one big go as well. And show you how easy it can be done when you're prepared and uh, ready. Slide the sleeve in, get it all the way in flush. Right, that's that in. That looks smart. We'll clean the grease off after. I like the colour of these uh, terra firma bits, that gold's superb. Right, a little detail. On your old arms, 
old bush, old washer, need to use again because I've got a spare axle. Here's one I prepared and greased earlier. It's a dished one. I had to have one of them in, didn't we, really? It's a dished one, so on the top like that. Bushes with the shoulder facing inwards. And then we'll have our new bush. And let's go and stick this on. And then we're going to do it, we're going to do it slightly different order. We're going to drop the axle in. So, oh yeah, grab the nut for us, please, mate. <clears throat> so this is going to slide in through there. That's already been greased as well. Slide the bush in the back, shoulder facing towards the bracket. If you come over my shoulder, you'll get a good look. Big washer on the end. Chuck us a nut, please. Thanks, mate. Big nut on the end, get it started. And that's it. Super. So now we've got two arms hanging down at a nice, uh, in a nice position so we can drop our axle casing in. Right, if you go around the other side, Mike, let's drop this axle casing back in. <coughs> Real time. Right, before it goes back in, I just want to flip it upside down and show people what I've done. Um, I've cheated a little bit because I don't like messing around. I've just, I've tapped them with the hammer I can just see that they've opened up ever so slightly. And you'll notice we've put in a horrifically rusty axle casing back on because we've got another DVD coming up with um, lots, more, lots more goodies on it. Up and over and in. Hopefully. How's your side going, mate? So far, so good. Can you see this one? Come on, have a look over my shoulder. Don't worry about lining it up too much at the moment. God, those poly brushes are wonderful with a bit of grease on them. They go straight in. Right. Your bolts. Tug them through for a second. I'll just show this side and then a uh, little bit of a chisel. What I want to do is line the sleeves up. So I use the chisel as a lever. And don't forget the bolts come through from that side. So you can fit your um, other bits and pieces whenever you want them. Chisel in the end, leave it where you want it. So without the diffing, it's lovely and light. So if you were doing this with all your bits and bobs and you do one side at a time, don't fall over that. If you're doing one side at a time on the jack, um, taking over from where we uh, will carry on after I've got the diff and the uh, casing back in. One little difference on this axle compared to the other one. Is those little bolts that go through there don't go into a captive nut. This is a discovery axle. So that'll be a nut and a bolt there, which means I can just put an Allen key in the bottom and do the underneath up nice and quickly, I think. Right, okay, axle's not part of the suspension DVD, so what I'm gonna do is get the diff back in, bolt it back up, and ready to go, and then we'll carry on filming the rest of the suspension DVD. This was purely a little bit of extra, I decided to uh, Slot in for anybody who hasn't, who's got the narrow arms and wants to know what's involved in uh, upgrading to a wider casing. So that's lovely. So we'll come back when we carry on with the suspension DVD. Bang a sec. Oh, that's me. Right, it's all back together. Diffs in, diff in first, obviously. Shove the hubs in either end. Um, you'll need new gaskets, etc. when you're doing that. So that's how you uh, change your centre casing if you want to use um, terra firma arms and. Uh, I think quite a few other firms only make um, the wide arms. Uh, right, starting to look really smart now. Uh, last couple of details, if you remember I said earlier, we cut through there with the um, grinder to grind that out, push the bushes out, same as we did with the other ones. And one little trick, because that's cast, I couldn't get that sleeve back up in there. It didn't want to fit back in there nicely. Two bushes on the outside, I'll show you on the other end in a second. So what I did was I just ground the end of that down with a grinder until it would uh, fit in there without giving me too much bother. I.e., you know, I could tap it in with the hammer. Because uh, you don't want to shorten it too much because otherwise when you tighten them bolts up and if you forget to put it in, you tighten them up and you'll end up snapping the lugs off. Right, okay, this end. Nice, easy job. I hope. One bush. Two bush. And... Three bush, go on, get in there. Ah, it's not gonna go in without the pump pliers. Or is it? Have 
haven't got them handy, so. Okay, don't uh, don't ever be over naughty with that, because uh, you can burn the ends over, and the bolt might not go in. Right, <clears throat> you can hit that bracket with the hammer slightly, just to uh, persuade it over. And now it's time for a little trick, because the car's up in the air. It doesn't want to come, uh, doesn't want to line up with that anymore. So, we get it down to uh, roughly where we want it. Which is about there. And what I do now is, I'll get someone in the car, I'll have this block of wood between the steering arm and the axle casing. And what that does, it's had the effect of locking the, locking the steering so that I'll get someone in the car to turn the steering wheel to the right which will pull the drag link across but because it can't turn the steering wheel it will pull the whole axle across applying pressure there um, and pulling it over to get it in simple, clever so uh, I'll set the camera up, get me bits and bobs ready and we'll film that bit going in and I think we're just about done on the suspension then on this car anyway back in a sec Right, okay, I've got my assistant in the car. There's the block of wood, and you can see the hole's not quite lined up yet. Okay, turn the wheel to the right slowly. Okay, the steering lock's locked on that. Stop, fraction more. That's there, hold it there. Now I'm gonna use the, the punch, just to help it over. It was pretty much spot on from the word go. So what you'll find is the bolt on the back. The bolt on the back is trying to come through at a slightly shallower angle than we would like. So I'm going to put the chisel on the top. So it's acting like a seesaw. It's going to push the head of the bolt up. Towards the hull, so no further nonsense. And double check, we haven't mashed up the thread. No, nope. on by finger. Do not beat that bolt in, it will not do it any good. Right, okay. So the bolt needed a quick explanation. The bolt needed to go through straight, it was pointing down at that angle. So uh, pointing down at that angle, the hole was up here, so all I did was hit the head of the bolt on the back, so you can see what a simplified explanation of what we were doing, in as well as down, so 45 degree angle, oh. simple, job done, okay turn the wheel to the left a little bit, today, thank you, job done, no manual labour, I'm not a big fan of it, right, back in a sec, right, well, I'm quite pleased with that, that's uh, pretty much the end of the DVD for the suspension on the car, so we'll have a quick recap and a skim round. Panard, rush, uh, panard rod and bushes, poly bushes with the sleeves and inserts. A few little um, tricks and tips for getting that back in and getting the old ones out. Useful stuff. It's definitely worth buying the bolts. They're, all, they're very available from most shops that specialise in Lamo bits, no problem, so it's not worth the bother. Same with these, if they don't come out, why wrestle? Why waste? hours and hours of time just get up there with a grinder like I showed you it's apart from being a little bit lethal with the uh, when they let go if you do it gently 20 seconds per side it's just not worth messing around trying to get those bolts out uh, shocks and springs terra firma uh, medium duty 50 mil lift springs with the uh, <coughs> pro sport long travel shock uh, nice blue gator at the top I've still got the twin turret top mount on it I haven't changed that over yet um, we took the bottom bracket off, so I'm going to swap them over, but basically the single one is just minus that piece there for the extra one at the front, so that's that. Uh, we demonstrated that you can't lift it up um, safely without changing the brake hoses as well, so you could do them before you do your brake, um, your suspension lift. Put the brake hoses on first, get that ready to go. Suspension arms, a smart looking bit of kit, love it. 
Um, and also, obviously, terra firma don't make the narrow arms. Um, there's, I don't, can't remember if I've ever seen them available. But regardless, I've shown you how to change the axle casing. It's not brain surgery. The reason those bolts aren't done back up is because we're doing uh, axle DVD next. So watch out for that one. Uh, back up to here, the poly bushes, we've shown how to fit them if that's all you're going to change. Um, nice easy job relatively, apart from struggling with that monster of a nut there. And don't forget, don't undo the front bolts until you've loosened that one off, because they hold the arm still for you to um, really give it some welly, because there was a couple of us. Two of us hanging off of the back of this one like monkeys trying to get it done. Right, follow me around the back. Have a look through here. Those cranked rear arms, much better idea as you can see, even at full travel, there's, um, even at full travel, there's not a lot of pressure on the bottom there. And if you undo those three bolts, you haven't got to undo the big bolt, it comes out in one hit, but I would suggest that you undo that big bolt to start with. Um, we had a seize bolt in the back there, it was a problem. Don't forget the little screwdriver, wedge it in there, or chisel, wedge it in there after you've undone the nut and um, run the grinder through if it sees, don't mess about with it. Uh, terra firma, rear shocks, heavy duty ones, pro sport, long travel, 50 mil um, medium duty rear springs and the relocating, <coughs> relocating, uh, relocating, oh dear, I've, got, I've gone blank for what they're called, spring relocators at the top. Uh, Oh, I forgot to mention the um, clamps, and also the fact that my little film stunt at the end, I haven't bolted these bits back up. The poly bushes in the anti-roll bar, the drop link's pretty easy to do, we've shown you how to undo the A-frame to drop the axle down to get your, uh, <coughs> get the clearance you need to get your high lift springs in. And same this side, and down the front, and obviously the poly bushes in the rear anti-roll bar. All simple stuff, albeit quite big and quite heavy. <clears throat> right, a couple of last details, so let's get back down the front and cover that, and then we're um, then we're done, I think. See you in a sec. Right, okay, one of the last little details. Dump stop. There is an old one that's come off, and there is a bump stop extension. Terra firma ones are universal got holes in them to fit just about every model and they just go over like that and act as a spacer between the new and the old so <coughs> as you can see it comes with extra bolts comes with long bolts after you've cleaned all the dirt out don't forget I do keep rattling on about a steam cleaner for a reason they're a good thing pressure washer bolt hooks in the end there bolt hooks in the op opposite end and then up goes the uh, Spacer, don't be fiddly. Right, up goes the spacer, and then up goes the bump stop over the holes. Now, what be nice? Oh, it's good doing things real time when they go right. On goes the nut, especially when you're facing a camera. On goes that nut, and on goes that nut. Right, so the jobs are good, and that stops the bump uh, axles uh, <coughs> coming up too high and forcing the bump stop to uh, the shock absorber to bottom out and damage. Simple. Times that by four, and you've got all them done. Right. Very last bit. Back in the set. Right. Okay. Last job. I said I would show you how to fit uh, caster correction bushes and uh, what job? I did build up a sweat and uh, it was a struggle. I couldn't find any particular uh, favourite way of doing it and the difficult part is this. Let's have a look. This metal sleeve houses the bush and it's very thin so if you're going to try and push it out in the vise or whatever, you've got to find something almost exactly the right size. I did find a little trick to make it doable with something not quite the right size. But uh, let's go over the uh, what the instructions say. 
which I've got here. And if you want to download this diagram, <coughs> yeah, if you look over my shoulder, I'll, I'll, I'll run through it with you. Uh, I'll put that for download on the internet, so um, you can see the details. Now it says we've got two uh, 44 millimeter arms here, and I've stuck the new ones in. And one of the most important details is center to center of your bolt holes. Yeah, 165 millimeters according to the instructions, and these old bushes are yeah pretty much spot on 165. Uh, they're not worn enough to. Uh, Sometimes you get the centre bush slopping about. Right, okay now, because I'm doing uh, using poly bush, I've uh, looked at the instructions and uh, I've already fitted a set as you can see. I tried doing it in the vise, um, no, nah, wasn't that easy. And I ended up using the press in the end, but I will run through a few ideas that if you want to try uh, one of them at home, then you can. If not, what I would say is find a garage, take the arms out, mark them up, Find a local garage or someone with a press. Just go and give them 20 quid, because if you've ruined one of these bushes, that's one bush, that's more than 20 quid ruined. So, anyway, <clears throat> right. Now, it says, I've got to use this as a straight edge, because I couldn't find my steel ruler. Um, mark the halfway mark across the bush, uh, the centre of the um, bolt hole. And I've scratched in the arm. A metal, metal, uh, <coughs> metal scratch so I can see uh, see the line and it says uh, a straight line between A and B has got to be 165 millimeters and then it says I bought a little uh, protractor to uh, demonstrate it you put that over the uh, center of that just I'm just using my eye uh, my eye as a gauge but I'm just putting that over the center of the pin and then it says mark the 90 degree mark which I've done I don't know if you can see it on the, the rust, but there's a bit of pen mark there. That's a 90 degrees. And then according to the instructions, it says mark two to three millimeters to the right of 90 degrees, which is the other mark I've marked there. Right, on both, uh, <coughs> on both of your eyes, if you like. And then some genius at Polybush, I'll just, uh, I don't know whether it's, I mean, this is supposed to be the correct instructions, but. Uh, some genius at Polybush has put two lines in the bush. And what I discovered was, if you rest them, well, I'll tell you, have a close look at this. They were the marks that I made. Scratch, scratch. And these lines line up perfectly. So that when you run your straight edge across them, the lines in the bush mark up with, match up with the lines on the uh, arm, both sides. I don't know whether it was uh, <coughs> meant to be like that, but I'll tell you what, it was uh, very useful. Right, now let's go back to the instructions. It says there should be a, you've got to mark your bush where it's closest to the outer casing. It's not actually 90 degrees to these bushes. It's just to the right of it. Just going by eye. I'm just doing it all by eye. I'm not wanting to be brain surgery, not to have any uh, special equipment to line that up. And um, <clears throat> on the one that I pushed in, that little pen mark that I put there lines up with the two to three millimeter mark across. So it doesn't actually end up being brain damage, lining them up. The brain damage is getting them in and out. And I've measured these, just by eye again, from the centre of that to the centre of that is 165. But obviously now the axle is going to be sitting cranked. Okay, simple. Right, that's that one. That's that explained. Now this little pig thing here, you could probably do it in a vice. Um, if you've got enough heat and enough gas in a blowtorch or a little Bunsen burner or something, you could burn the centre of the bush out, gouge it out, get the centre centre bush out and then the rubber out around the outside of it, but that would be a nightmare. And then once you've got all the rubber out, then what you would do is get your hacksaw in there, cut through, cut through just the sleeve, so like a millimetre, but 44 millimetres long, cut through the sleeve, and then with your hammer and chisel, 
chase it all the way out and down. And then you could probably get away without um, having a press to put that back in. You'd still need a big hammer and a proper drift, exactly the right size to beat the new one in. Um, Polly Bush make a tool called the Bushwhacker. And we're going to send this one over, hopefully, so we can demonstrate it. And it sounds like a jolly good idea, like the old Cortina Voidbush uh, affair. If you've got a vice now, I would have said this is the next way to try. As I said, I'll do it with a press, but uh, it's because I'm in my own. If I had a tame gorilla with me, I might have had a go but with him. Anyway, there's my chisel, little edge, grind a little edge in it. And what I want to do is stick that on there, just go bang. Plane's going over today. Bang. I'm just chasing the edge of the bush away from the arm. Put my foot on that. Don't like noise. All the way around. Try and hit the bush. Hopefully, you can see what I've done, which is now I've mashed the edge of that budget bush, 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 bush in, and I found a socket. Probably, luckily enough, about half a millimetre or a millimetre narrower than the outer diameter of that. And now I've pulled all the edges in. We can sit that on the top and whack it through with the press. So. I'll get it set up and I'll be back in a sec. Right, okay, you might be able to do this on floor, on floor with a sledgehammer. A big socket over the back or a big bit of tube over the back, long enough for the bush to disappear into. And then a smaller socket on top and obviously where I pulled the edges in, it's now not going to slide through the middle. Because I, when I did that one, I tried just pushing the socket through and the socket just ended up getting jammed in the end. So it was obviously just small enough to get wedged inside the, uh, the sleeve. Right, so on that goes, like that, and I'm gonna give you an idea of the sort of pressures involved in this job. socket, I was lucky there. Thanks Trev for that. <laughs> right. And there you go. Believe me, that was a fraction of the time it took me to get them two pigs out after I tried a couple of different ways of doing it. Right, that actually came out reasonably easy. If you've got heat, you could probably cook up the outside, bash it through with a socket, um, pre-soak it in WD-40 or if you've just changed the oil and you've got a bucket of old engine oil, you could drop the end in. Anything, you can heat up that area so the metal expands. Hopefully we'll let go of that a little bit better and allow WD-40 or whatever you're gonna to use to soak in, plus gas, another good one. Right, okay, so I can still see my marks just about. So make sure you don't uh, lose them. And what we're gonna do now is pop the other one out and I'll be back in a second when we're ready to film the new ones going in. That's it. Right, push that other bush out, pig, but it's done, it's out, and now I've re-scratched the lines on the uh, arm, including the one that's two to three millimetres to the right of 90 degrees. Now, I did have a black pen on somewhere, but I've put it down, but I put a little pen mark on the uh, tube where it's closest to the uh, outer edge. And I'm not sure, it doesn't look like it's exactly 90 degrees to that. 
it looks ever so slightly over which might be uh, helpful because uh, if you come and look over the top from behind me then uh, if we get that bush lined up like that so that line is in line with that and that line is in line with that that little pen mark now is in in line with the the mark that's two to three millimeters to the right like the uh, drawing 